Welcome to Talking Science, where we dive into the latest news from space and science. The University of Queensland's Professor Warwick Bowen has led a team that's developed a quantum microscope that can reveal biological structures at resolutions previously beyond our capability. Professor, thanks for your time. My pleasure. Well, before we get into it, a quick reminder that you can get behind the scenes goss and early access to all Trek Zone podcasts by becoming a member today. Click the join button on any Trek Zone video on YouTube. Go to the Trek Zone slash support or put your phone up to the QR code that is on screen throughout the show. Now, Professor, it's not like traditional microscopes at this stage, the ones where we get to look in them and look down at a plate. It's currently spread out all on a table like we can see here in this overlay. Uh, will it ever get to a point where it'll resemble more like a traditional microscope, like the ones behind you? It's not so far away from the state-of-the-art and precision microscopes now. So, so the kind of microscopes that you use to see down to the nanoscale or see very, very faint details inside cells, they involve these sorts of bright lasers that we're using, and often they'll be on a table much like the ones you see here. They're not like a microscope you see in school, um, but they're very powerful, useful microscopes. The big challenge really for us is that quantum entangled light is quite fragile and you have to be careful when you use it and that introduces a whole another set of requirements that quantum physicists like myself know how to handle and to deal with. But to make the microscope useful for biologists, we have, we have to make that quantum entanglement user friendly and robust. So that's really a major challenge. Um, for the broad usability of these sorts of microscopes. Well, can you tell us how this microscope works? Our microscope is a special sort of microscope that fingerprints the molecules in a cell. These microscopes require very high intensities of light, around a billion times brighter than the intensity of the sun at the Earth. Um, what we have done is reduce the noise floor of the microscope using quantum entangled photons. That allows us to attract, to extract more information to get better clarity with the same intensity of light and therefore avoid damaging the sample we're looking at. What will this breakthrough mean for the scientific community? I think it will be quite significant. Um, this is a form of quantum technology and quantum technologies are thought to offer revolutionary capabilities for future technologies and future applications in many different areas. Our microscope is the first sensor that uses quantum entangled light that shows that you can get an absolute performance advantage over other techniques. So that's a major step in this process towards really getting quantum technologies out and into applications. One of the keys to this breakthrough was to climb over the hard barrier of traditional light-based microscopy. What is the tradition and how did you break it? You know, microscopy started with the discovery that if you take a couple of lenses and put them in the right sort of order, you can see stuff with more precision at small scales. And that led to the discovery of cells and bacteria and viruses and basically life as we know it. it completely revolutionized our understanding of our bodies and of living systems. Um, in the 1960s, there was a, a second massive discovery and that was the laser. And that led to extremely bright laser microscopes that were awarded the Nobel Prize in 2014 and pushed resolution down into the nanoscale and pushed sensitivity up so we could really see the rich rich dynamics of biological systems in ways we could never see before. But those microscopes have now hit this major barrier. And that barrier is, in order to get better performance, you need to turn light intensity up. But, in turn, in, but to turn light intensity up, you end up, you'd start to damage the cell. Basically, you cause sunburn. You give it a radiation dose and you can't, you just, it won't survive. You can't measure it anymore. So what we did was break that particular barrier. We showed that quantum light allows you to extract more information per photon you use in the measurement and therefore allows you to see more with more clarity and more structures in biological samples than is otherwise possible. This new microscope provides 35% improved clarity without destroying the cell. Now, I never realised that that was a factor. What does this mean for future studies? 
That's a very good question. So it absolutely is a factor, and people people worry um, greatly about the effect of the light they use to probe biological samples on the health and viability of those samples. It's not just destroying them. In our case, the laser, in some cases, would just drill a hole through through the sample, right? People use lasers for laser machining of metals, so it's not so surprising. Um, but even before that, you start to create free oxygen radicals that that change the health of the cell. You you start to change how it behaves, its viability, its function. So people really worry about this. Now, we, as you say, we demonstrated a 35% improvement in clarity. So we showed that with a given amount of phototoxicity, with a given amount of laser irradiation, we could improve the clarity of images by 35%. That's something, it's not an enormous amount. Um, really to see big applications, we're gonna to need to improve that. And there are ways to do that. Um, the kind of quantum light source that we demonstrated uh, in other contexts has been shown to allow up to a factor of 30 improvement in noise floor, which means that we could improve clarity by a factor of 30 rather than a factor of 35%. In other words, 30 times compared to 1.35 times. Well, Professor, where did the idea of a quantum entangled microscope come from? That's a great question. So, in fact, this is, this is a problem, this is a solution that's been understood for more than 40 years. So people in, in my field, in quantum optics, have known that you could use entangled light, you could use correlations between photons of light, to improve measurements in biology. And it had been thought that this would be one of the major areas of impact of this sort of light. Uh, but it took a very long time to go from the fundamental theory of the field to demonstrating proof of principle experiments on a lab table with basic, basic you know, physical objects like mirrors and things like this, to actually use, being able to use these sources of quantum light in biology so really the that's the the transition has been this transition from understanding to proof of principles in physics to applications applications in biology which just takes a takes a long time so the idea has been around for a while um, and and at the same time as this idea had I'm going to I'm going to pause for a second um, so this idea has been around for some time um, and it's really been an idea that's been biding its time because laser microscopes have also been developing and so it took until they reached their fundamental limits before it really made sense to apply quantum correlations to improve them. Now, Wayne, while you lead the team, you're not the whole team. Can you tell us about who is helping to make this quantum microscope a reality? Yeah, that's right. So this was, this was an effort that was four or five years of work and really the major, major result of, of a PhD student in my lab, now Dr. Cacere Casasio. Um, so she started her project with this, with this particular result in mind. It was a huge mountain to climb. We didn't know if we'd get up, up it. So really full credit to her and the rest of the team for making this happen. Well, what's it like to watch her grow from being your student to earning her doctorate, all while making this microscope a reality? It's really incredibly rewarding. I think this this result has opened the door for her to, who knows where she'll go, but it's opened the door to so many opportunities. And I, I'm just looking forward to seeing what where, where that leads her and what exciting new, new stuff she does. Professor, thanks for beaming into Trexo. Uh, very much my pleasure. Keep up to date with Twitter. Catch new podcasts daily on YouTube. Plus, we're beaming to your favourite podcast app five days a week. Just search for Trekzone and subscribe.